Death by stoning. Sudanese woman receives death sentence for adultery. On June 26, Mariam uh, Al Sayed Tir, uh, Tirab, a 20 year old woman from Sudan, was sentenced to death by stoning for cheating on her husband, making her the first case of stoning in the country after almost a decade. The police arrested her after she had separated from her husband and returned to her family home. The trial was highly irregular. The judicial process began without a formal complaint, complaint, and she was also denied access to a lawyer. News of her conviction raises concerns, as many fear that after the military coup in October of 2021, lawmakers are now deliberately administering severe sentences against women to reverse the progress women's rights have made in the country under the transitional government. Uh, Tirab has appeared, has appealed to the Supreme Court, which has yet to validate the state's ru court ruling and which can annul the sentence since it represents a violation of international law. The African Center for Justice and Peace Studies denounced the statement as violating inter domestic and international law and demanded Tirab's quote unquote immediate and unconditional release. Okay, wait, uh, can you explain the political aspect of it? Like with after the coup and the military, what are they trying to do? So under the transitional government, there were a number of reforms that were made so much as flanny flogging, excuse me, flogging was abolished. Um, they had a few reforms to women's rights, and they also have reforms in regards to apostasy. So S Sudan, I believe, is the most recent country to abolish the death penalty for apostasy. However, you're still criminalized Also for it. closer to Israel, right? I think that was also one thing. That oh, did. yes. That, that, Armin, very good. Yeah, no, that's very important. They did also become um, noticeably closer to Israel within yeah the past year and a half as well and that was part of the military or part of the government that was part of the reform like your former government. like are they okay so basically you're saying that after the coup the people the military now is trying to undo they're walking the they're walking back the progress that was made mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah and you're saying this could be related we don't know if this is related yeah that's what some analysts are saying is it, it, it represents you know, going back to a hardliner approach, essentially. Um, mm. What I find noticeably confusing is that, and this is maybe, a, well, this is like an Islamic technicality thing. So she's accused of committing adultery against her husband, but she was separated from her husband at the time. Yeah, that doesn't matter. Well, okay, what, ma what matters is How does is that work that in Islam? Okay. First of all, um, well, the way that it's supposed to work in Islam, and this is debatable, is that you need four witnesses, okay? But also, the part, okay, the, the verses in the Quran, and I'm not joking about this, this is actually serious. Maybe you should want to stop dr drinking that water, Susanna, while I'm telling you, because you're going to spill it all over. Okay? And I'm not, this is actual, I'm, I am, I promise you that this is not a joke for people who might be new here. Okay. Uh -huh. The parts of the Quran that had stoning for adultery were eaten by a goat. Okay. I don't know if it was a goat or a sheep, but it was, so those Quranic verses were lost. Okay. This is official Islamic narrative. I'm not making this stuff up, okay? So there is no <laughs> there is no part of the Quran that tells you that you're supposed to be stoned by adultery, okay? But Omar, the second caliph of the Muslims, he specifically says that he remembered. So I think this was Aisha's copy of the Quran. Mm. If I remember this part correctly, Aisha is like Muhammad's favorite wife, mm -hmm. uh, the one that he married when she was six years old. Um, I think yeah. she mentioned that th that part of the Quran was eaten by a goat, if I remember correctly. But Omar specifically remembers um, remember that those verses existed in the Quran. So he's, he, even after Muhammad's death, he continued to do stoning because you're like, I don't care if this is not in the Quran anymore. I remember that it was there. Okay. But the parts that were remaining in the Quran 
where like you're supposed to flog for adultery like it ha you have flogging but you don't have stoning um the, and the stoning part was taken from judaism right like from this is for it comes from the old testament and stuff right and but even though you don't have in the quran stoning by death uh, so uh, death by stoning and uh, for adultery the hadith still mentions it so that you still have islamic scripture that mentions stoning right but there are people who say like you know what um maybe it was a miracle that the okay so the way that muslim a lot of muslims look at this is like it wasn't it wasn't lost okay the goat was sent by allah okay <laughs> so, <laughs> wait is this that yeah is, this, is that canon this understanding the, yeah the, of course it's canon everything oh is on my law including the, the every point. everything that happens happens because allah has a like if oh allah God. made the goat eat that part of the quran is because allah wanted to remove that part of the quran <laughs> right so oh it's a miracle <laughs> so you shouldn't be stoning can't you see the goat what, what do you think who do you think sent the goat <laughs> this is so <laughs> wild so right. oh my god okay it this i mean the actual details of this woman's case are really really messed up there were so many different injustices injustices that she experienced in wait wait, wait. one more important point i wanted oh. to mention is that did they have ask did they have four witnesses because islamically you for about for punishment like this you need like four i would so this a lot of muslims like oh look islam is not cruel uh, because because how could you produce four witnesses? Like four people have to have witnessed you having sex. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and because, and they say that so, and th by the way, Muhammad added this to the Quran because he was trying to save Aisha from like a lot of like um, people talking around her, against her, you know, behind her back. But Muslim, a lot of Muslims say the reason why it requires four witnesses is because so it's an excuse not to punish anybody. But did they have, Four witnesses here or no? That's not known. It, it, that hasn't been reported on. Um, the, oh my gosh. So th this uh, African Center for Justice and Peace Studies made a very good point in, in a statement they gave regarding this. They said the application of the death penalty by stoning for the crime of adultery is a grave violation of international law, including the right to life and the prohibition of torture and cruel and inhumane or degrading treatment or punishment and i think raising this as a looking through this as at, at the lens of state sanctioned torture really changed the way i look at this kind of thing and it made me consider like all the other countries that practice stoning to this day so iran is the world's highest has the world's highest rate of execution by stoning and then there's also Afghanistan, Nigeria, Somalia, Brunei, and um, Pakistan. Uh, and it occurs in Mali, it's uh, the UAE, and Qatar and Yemen. Um, although in many of these places, the stonings haven't actually been practiced, but in places like Iran and Afghanistan in particular, stoning is actually practiced. And so I went to look I think at. It has become re, uh, used to in Iran. I think it, it, it became illegal now. To my knowledge, it is still on the books as a, as a policy. Okay. There were people who were going to be stoned to death around 2010, but the judiciary like backed out of it. Hmm. I heard it was removed from. Um, as as a method of punishment, but I could be wrong. All right, but go on. The Library of Congress believes that around 150 people were stoned to death in Iran between 1980 and 2009, although the reported numbers are probably lower than the actual figures. So that's um, 10 years of no stoning. I think that that's what I heard. Like there has been 10, like I think they put a stop on it. I don't know. I know yeah. when it came to the 2010 one that they backed out, but I wanted to look at what the penal code said about it. And so, um, Article 102, for the purpose of stoning, a man should not be buried into a pit up to his waist and the woman up to her breast, and then he or she shall be stoned to death. Article 
103. If during the stoning, the condemned person flees from the pit, if his or her commission of zina was proved by testimony of witnesses, if he or she shall be returned to the pit for the implementation of the stoning. But if the zina is proved by his or her confession, uh, they shall not be returned. So basically, if you confess to it yourself, there weren't witnesses and you managed to escape the pit, like you, they will not continue to execute you. They'll let you go. Yeah. No. What? Wait, mm, no, I'm sorry. not done. No, if a person who is sentenced to Hadad or Hadud punishment of lashes flees, he or she shall be turned for the execution of the Hadud punishment. Anyway, Article 104. The stones shall not be so big as to kill the person by one or two strikes. Neither shall it be so small that it cannot be called a stone. So the Islamic penal code literally specifies the sizes of the rocks so that the punishment, so that the pain of the execution will be inflicted for as long as possible. Yeah, you can't be too big so that he dies too quickly, for example. You can't just be like, okay, I'm going to do a mercy kill. Instead of throwing rocks at him, I'm going to just get this giant ass rock and just throw it on his head so he dies like right away. No, like he has to, he, has to, he or she has to suffer. By the way, my classmate's father was stoned to death. Oh my god! Yeah, the guy that like in uh, in school used to sit right next to me, like we were like right next to each other. His father, like my father, was a doctor, but unlike my father, he used to put his patients um, in, you know, use like anesthesia, like when they when they were passed out, like I don't know mm -hmm. what you call them when you put them under, you make, you know. Yeah, anesthesia. Uh, uh, Anesthesia. Like he, his patients were, um, you know, women who were pregnant and stuff, right? But he mm -hmm. used to put them um, in a coma or something. What do you call them? When, when, when you are like passed out, what is that called? Just, people say you're going under. You're okay. When you're under, he anesthesia. used to just, he, he used to have sex with them. Okay? <gasps> yes. And he did that with multiple, like, I think, like, I don't remember the number, but it was a big number of patients. Okay. Holy and then crap. he he was caught and this was in shiraz in iran and i remember like, i don't know what did this to him but his, his father was just captured and he was stoned to death because of it yeah it was my my cl classmate yeah what year was that <sighs> this is like maybe like 20 years ago i think Holy cow, years ago. that's so crazy yeah yeah anyways we, yeah the, i don't know there was it's a video just... of it as well like people were like passing on the video of it so i didn't watch it I, you know everybody was like acting like they like everybody like oh did you watch it did you watch it and i was lying like yeah i watched it, it was so gruesome but i actually didn't watch it i was lying holy crap I don't, yeah, I don't even know if there was a video, but everybody like was claiming that they had watched it. Anyways. Oh, my God. Oh, Will Philly is bringing up a very good point. Or Will Philify, he's saying stoning is also communal. This sick bonding might be another reason to have the stoning take long. I don't know if about... I think... Yeah, people show up so much... I'm always yeah. surprised how, how many people show because it's not like the officials who do the stoning. Like there is a is a day for stoning, and then people just show up to do the stoning. And it's so surprising how many people show up. Like people are like, yeah, like let's go stone this MFO. Like what the yeah, hell? Yeah, it's a form of community punishment. It's so sick. Yeah, but like, why do people show up? Like they're not getting paid or anything. They're just volunteering. Like it, it's like a exciting event or something. It's so weird. People are crazy. Man, talk about a way to breed sickness into a society. It's yeah. so insidious. I know. Like when you really sit down and think about it. Holy crap. Yeah. No. Yeah. I don't know. I thought that this was a really important story to bring attention to, to just like remember that this is something that is on the books that can be the someone can receive this sentence in you know several countries around the world to this day um even if they don't actually use that sentence very often the fact that it is still allowed to stand on the books means that someone could have be faced with that you know even if it's not applied very often it's okay so it also, sick. 
it's also I don't understand why. Okay, so the men are you you the dig the hole that you dig to put the men in and the woman in. The, for the woman is deeper, right? Yeah. Okay, so the the law is that you you dig a hole, you put the man and the woman in it, and the part of their body is out. But if they manage to get out, like while you're stoning them, if they manage to get out of the hole and run away, the law is that okay, fair is fair, you're not free, which is such a weird justice. Like if you are better at digging yourself out of a hole, you get to live. But if the person who is like can't dig himself out of a hole. They have to die, okay? Yeah, you're so, right. Now that I think about it, that's yeah, that's also crazy. <laughs> yeah, like how is that justice? And but also it's extremely anti-woman because the woman's hole is deeper. Like the woman yeah. is how far does the woman then does she go up all the way up to her neck, right? Like well, I've according to Iran's penal code, it's it says un, up to the breast, but the man is up, up to, to the, the waist. Right. So the woman has less of a chance to get away. <laughs> Like why? Like I can't. Like why is why is the woman's whole like they really want like okay, maybe maybe the like maybe people men were just looking after each other and like okay let's like make it easier for men to get away. But the woman like if you yeah. sleep with another man like we have to make sure there's no way for you to get away. Like yeah. what is? Oh my god! How do people look at this? I'm like that seems fair. Like okay, I know yeah. <laughs> Dulal is saying Islamic justice. Yeah, why am I asking questions about why this doesn't make sense? It's Islamic justice. I mean, Islamic and Jewish, let's be fair here, okay? This comes That's from true. Judaism. Yeah. 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 Good old Abrahamic faiths. You love to see it. Just a real mm. exemplar of, yeah, justice and morality. True. Kindness and benevolence. Hey guys, if you're a fan of Blasphemy and Sexy Cali, you know, like me, then you need to be sure to subscribe to our newsletter. Link in the description below. Because if you subscribe, we will send you a free copy of our Blasphemous Art ebook. And let me tell you, it is the tastiest Blasphemy that you can find anywhere available today. And we are so generous with our blasphemy that we continue to send you more blasphemy every week. So make sure to subscribe. Link in the description below.